right here. Yes, it's TNC Movie Nights the Review. I don't know why I do that sometimes when we call it the review. That's not what we call it. It's just a review. It happens every week. It's not like it's a special thing. It is special. Very special. We watch Jungle Cruise, is what I'm trying to say. I think. I don't really know anymore. I'm slowly losing my mind. I live in a van. Down by the river sometimes. Down by the jungle? On a cruise? Perhaps? Brought it back. We haven't talked about this yet. I have no idea what you thought about this movie. So, Brandon, what did you think about this movie? I uh, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. It was a good movie. By no means was it terrible, bad, nothing made me roll my eyes in the film. But it was also just like a fun popcorn movie. This isn't, I, don't, I mean, maybe it'll win some, you know, awards or something for, like, cinematography and stuff. But nothing was crazy in this film. Uh, outside of it, was, it was a good time. The, uh, the cast, I thought, was really fun. The dynamic between uh, The Rock and Emily Blunt was fantastic. And then Jack Whitehall getting thrown in there as well as uh, Oh, McGregor. my God, he was great. He was so much fun in this movie. Uh, two other people I, I wanted to bring up as well. Of course, Paul Giamatti. Mwah. Love Paul Giamatti. <laughs> Paul Giamatti. He was in the movie for like 20 minutes, but man, it was a good time every minute of it. And then, uh, I don't know how to say his name properly, I might say it right, uh, Jesse Plemons. I uh, I was having a really difficult time the whole film trying to figure out who the hell he was, because I knew I've seen him before. And at first I thought he was the guy from Daredevil, uh, Daredevil's like best friend sidekick. Then I realized he's from my favorite show of all time, Friday Night Lights, and I got super <laughs> excited, because he's the best friend in that movie as well. And he was great. I really, really liked him in this movie a lot. As Prince, uh, J- uh, how do you say it properly? It was like Jachim or something like that, or oh, whatever. Jachim, yeah. Jachim. He was uh, he was really fun when he was on screen. I thought he played a very fun villain for like a Disney type movie, and he did a pretty believable job too. So, uh, w- what did you think, though, Alex? Before we kind of get into it a little bit more. I liked it too, man. I was so pleasantly surprised. I thought this was going to be very like Indiana Jones, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull type, where it's just mm-hmm. like terrible, yeah. but maybe fun if you're eight. But this was definitely more like like Pirates of the Caribbean. Not in like the same vibe. This was definitely yeah. much more for kids. But like where you're, this is, you know, if they even follow the same model. It was like take a ride. Add a Disney park, add a curse, add some undead pirates or conquistadors, and make a thing about it. Add some twists, add some turns, add some action, add some actors that everyone likes, and it that mold works, man. I had a great time. You said The Rock, he was great. I don't. Do we still call him The Rock, or is, do we? I mean, he just goes by Dwayne Johnson, but he's always gonna be The Rock, right? Hey, well, it's I DJ. Mean, it's DJ. Uh, DJ it says right. some people. I forgot where I heard someone call him DJ. I was I like, well, hard calls him DJ. I was no, like, it was a director or something. It's like, oh, it was a great what? time working with DJ, and I was like, oh my god, DJ? How are you? Right. Okay. <laughs> spoiler alert, by the way. This is gonna be a slightly spoiler heavy one, but like they literally turned him to stone. How are we not supposed to refer to him as The Rock still? I don't know yeah. what to do about this. But him and Emily Blunt were fantastic. I love Emily God, Blunt. God, yeah. She's great. And yeah, man, Jack Whitehall kind of stealing the show. I like God, it. yeah. It's so weird because I like those like British panel shows that he's been on for years. And it's so weird seeing him go from just like a comic on some panel shows. Not in a bad way. I mean, that's great. He's successful. Yeah. And he's got he's a very, you know, successful stand up comic. But then it just transitioned, and now he's in, like, Disney movies, and he's going to be in Clifford. And he's, like, yeah. is he just, like, officially a movie star now? I don't know. But either way, I'm here for it, because he was amazing. Seeing Paul Giamatti was really weird, but I like it. So it, It's always a good time seeing uh, Paul Giamatti. Oh I, I got to say, though, I did not realize that he was in Clifford, and I had no intention of seeing Clifford until now. He was incredible in this movie, and he makes me want to go see more movies. And I, I'm glad he's getting more parts because, damn, he deserves—he killed it. Uh, yeah, everyone in the movie though was honestly really, really good. There was a lot of 
it, weirdly enough, like the fight, the little fight scenes and stuff were actually really well played out, which makes sense. It's Disney, Marvel. They had got good people to still do all that kind of stuff. So I, um, yeah, all in all, I was just really impressed with this movie. I thought it was going to be terrible. I thought it was going to be one of those like, ugh, another Disney movie just to pull in some cash. But it, it was fun. It, it was a very fun movie. And I got to say, Disney gets some points for me for this because they i feel like their sort of representation in the movie was a lot better than i expected and a lot better than they have historically been and i'm thinking of two very specific things i was thinking of how they portrayed the like the natives right because the jungle cruise ride itself is a little bit not great at that they kind of depict them as like these these backward savages cannibals and and like the, the depictions of them are are not necessarily the friendliest. and then a lot of times in these movies you get that where it's just like this tribe and they're just kind of a middle finger to like any sort of native peoples because they're all painted as just like literally war painted bone mask wearing cannibals who are just out to kill you and then to kind of twist that for them to be like frank we can't do this anymore man i don't this is what what are we doing and just to have that sort of self-awareness to make fun of that i thought that was great and then to also have like to go beyond that and give them actual characters with depth to them oh yeah and and, and, and it, it was it was awesome. I was like, oh my god, these are people that I, I like care about and I re like relate to, and, and it's it's a you know they're whole ass characters. It wasn't just for the punchline. And then with McGregor's coming out sort of thing, where he told Frank that he was gay, and it was like, I thought they did it very well. That conversation about you know another princess he was going to marry. And I forgot the exact way they phrased it, but where something about like where his interests lie, and they were kind yeah. of subtle with that. And that would have been okay, you know, just to be like wink, kind of the thing that Disney has always done, where they're like, "We have gay people in our movies, right?" And you're like, "Well, I mean, you had like I'm thinking of like Beauty and the Beast, where they had like one split second where you're like, oh." I guess that's what they're considering representation, which is better than none. But then to kind of really let you know when he was like based on who I love. And it was like, that is a very clever way of hitting to, it on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. Hit it on the nose, but also in a way that someone would in the thirties and forties. Yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of how someone would say that to another person. hundred percent. It was a lot more subtle, quiet sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then to not just make him a punchline, not yeah. just make him be the the like stereotypical feminine frilly. Oh no! And you know, he had all of the luggage, and he was the one who didn't want to get dirty, and he was the well dressed one. But that was his personality. That wasn't just a trope. On and they really went in depth with that on like why. And then later on, the only gay joke they made came from him to Frank. Yeah. And so it wasn't it wasn't making fun of him, it was him sort of poking fun at Frank, and I thought that was really well done. And then they still kind of made him a badass too. Yeah. Like he was participating in the fights, and he was doing some stuff. Not as much as The Rock, obviously. Not as much as Emily Blunt, obviously. They did it in a way that would fit his character really, really well, and I thought it was very well done. And then the other thing that I really loved about this is they kept the corny jokes in. Because the, the funniest thing about the Jungle Cruise are those stupid jokes that they make. You sit on the boat with a bunch of strangers and you have someone talking into a microphone saying the dumbest jokes ever while you watch some kind of not so great animatronics come up. And it's fun and it's lighthearted and it's nice. And they kept that in and they brought it up more than once in the movie. So every time it happened, I was like, oh, they did the thing. <laughs> and also that was a pretty good bad joke. Yeah. So man, this, they just did the things right. I like it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like both of us really don't have any complaints about this movie. It was a really fun movie, and it felt good finally seeing a good movie after the last two, three weeks. Last good movie we saw before this was Black Widow. Then I saw Snake Eyes, Fast and the Furious, which was the best movie I saw prior to this. And then The Green Knight, which is... 
We gotta do another worst movies ever show because I have a new one. Man, Batman vs Superman doesn't look like that bad anymore. Uh, wow, Green Knight was terrible. It's all safe for now, but I. Uh, it was trying so hard to be like, you just don't get it. It's over your head if you don't understand this. Like, shut up, make a good movie. So, yeah, I'll we'll, we'll talk. We, we gotta figure something out. It's been a year. It's been over a year since our first episode. I'm almost positive. I'll, I'll double check, but I'm oh. pretty sure our first episode was like July 29th of last year. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll through and check now. I, I need to this for check. a year, man. Well, can't even know. Let me check. Oh wow, actually, the eighth was our first episode. So Sunday. So when this episode comes yeah. out, it's been a year. It's hey, wild. look at us. We've been doing this for a year. It's so funny fun, how man. different we look Thank a year ago. Yeah. Wow. A little bit hairier. Yeah. A little bit older. It's wild. We're tired. Our we setups. Just went through a pandemic. Yeah, I went through a pandemic. We had a white screen and a white screen. Now we got all this stuff behind us, and it's crazy. Well, here's to a year, bud. And... You know what? I think Jungle Cruise is a mighty fine one. It's not perfect, yeah. but it's fun, and it knows how to do something right. And the, it is what a prime example of something that we've talked about over and over again about how if you just do the right things right, and you don't do the wrong things. If that's all it takes, and then you're a good movie. Because, like you said earlier, maybe it's not going to win any awards. I don't know if it should, but it's a good movie. It's fun. It's meant to be for kids and families, which it was. It's meant to be kind of fun, kind of funny, a little lighthearted, a little bit of a message, a little bit of action, like a PG version of like, like Pirates of the Caribbean or like an Indiana Jones, that's sort of like adventure type thing, but a little bit more for the kids. And they did it. Yeah. And then all you got to do is not screw that up. Just take a minute to think about things. Does this make sense? Is this in character, and does it screw with the continuity of this movie? That's it. Just just think about your thing. Sit in the editing room after you're done and be like, does it make sense? And it feels like they did that, because this movie's just nice, and it's it works. And I love when movies do that. And you don't have to be an Oscar contender to be a good movie. And not all Oscar, Oscar contenders, that's a weird one to say twice in a row, are good movies, because they don't do that stuff. So, kudos to you, Jungle Cruise, because you made a good thing. All, all great points, and uh, I think that's going to wrap us up for us today. Nice short review, fun movie. It's always good when they're fun, so we actually enjoy yeah. ourselves when we talk about them. Yeah, man. Why don't you tell yeah. those people where they can find us? Real nice and simple, thenerdchambers.com. All of our stuff's there. TNC Movie Nights on all social media platforms. If you want to reach out to us, if you have a movie you want us to see, because I'll be honest, Alex and I, we see all the big movies. You know, we don't really see the little side movies all the time. So maybe if there is one coming up in the next couple weeks, next month, October, this year, next year, let us know and we'll make it a point to go see it. Like Stillwater. Seems like a good movie. Will I see it in theaters? I don't think so. But if you want us to see Stillwater or another movie, let us know. We'll happily go check yeah. it out. So let us know down in the comments or reach out to us on anything TNC movie nights. If you want to support us in the show, really simple, the nerdchambers.com. We got a shop. Go get a merch. We got Nerd Chambers over there and then TNC Penguin right here. We also have TNC movie nights, all different shows on there too. Bunch of cool stuff. But that's, uh, that's going to do it for us today. That was a uh, solid one. Sweet, good point. Love it. See you guys next week.